Hi, it's Mark from Trainspark. We've got something a little bit different for you today. What we wanted to do was share an example of a learning tool we've created using ChatGPT and we have embedded into a LearnDash course because we thought it'd be useful for any developers or learning content creators to get some ideas and we'll share some of the things we've learned in our process for creating this because it might help someone else doing the same. So what we created here was a scenario based learning tool where you have Karen here. She is a, uh, a manager and what she's doing is asking the learner questions to test their understanding of a subject and the learner responds uh, you know, using the text box here and Karen will create a dialogue with this person to test their understanding and if they are unclear on anything, the learner can actually ask uh, Karen a bit more information and, and she will help by giving um, some advice of her own. So you can see here, she's asked a question, I've responded and she's responded to that. If I say I don't know something, she will then respond and um, you know, help me out. You know, she'll she'll talk through what I need to know. So in this instance, it's around a financial conversation and she's given me um, some information that I, I wasn't sure of. And we think this is a fantastic tool and a fantastic way to use ChatGPT in your learning platforms. And it's basically the future of online learning this, you know, you're using AI as a, as a tool to help. So I just wanted to talk through the way we did this. So firstly, we signed up for OpenAI, which is you know what ChatGPT is. So if you head to platform.openai.com, you'll end up at a page like this where you can create an account. And as part of your account, at the time of recording, you get a certain number of free credits uh, to just try the, the platform. So you can create your own API key and you'll be given, you know, a, a certain amount of tokens, which are the sort of currency of ChatGPT to use within a certain time frame. So we took those and used them to create our first very basic platform uh, or, or tool to interact with the API. So to do this, we headed to GitHub and found the, the kind of the most basic example of a PHP script which communicates with ChatGPT. And it was this one on screen, and we'll put a, a link to this in the um, description of this video. But this is the bare bones of a PHP script that talks to ChatGPT. And if you're not familiar, PHP is what WordPress is based on. And you can see it's got a very basic form here at the bottom where you can insert a message. And it takes that message that's been posted and then sends that over to ChatGPT here. And this is the structure of you know, the API request. And it uses something called PHP curl to, to send that. And what they'll do is send that away and you'll get a response, which is then displayed on screen. And you'll see, you know, uh, the example here is, is very, very basic. Um, you can pass additional information here, uh, which we'll look at shortly, but um, you'll end up with something a bit like this. And what we have is just a plain text interface here where you can ask you something. Uh, so we've created a very basic um, scenario here where it's asked you your experience with WordPress and WooCommerce, and you can type your response into, into this and uh, it will you know, respond to it. And so, it, you know, it takes quite a while and you'll see that it's a very slow interface here and, and not ideal. So this is this kind of very basic uh, application. It's, I think it did actually, did it respond there? I think it responded, um, but I want to go back. Hmm. I'll, uh, I'll submit that again. Again, I think so you can see what what it does you'll see there we go so this text at the top changes and you know it, it's not showing any of your conversation history or anything like that it's just your you you've kind of simplest um, version of this possible so we need to elaborate on that and give it a, a nicer user experience 
and uh, make this a more usable tool for a, a learner on a platform. So if we just want to switch over to the example that we were looking at previously there, I'll switch the, the tab over. So we wanted to create something like this. So to do this, we used HTML and CSS, which are this kind of front end um, kind of coding that you can use to create nice interfaces like this. You know, so you create the colors, fonts, images, um, layout of it using HTML and CSS. And then we use something called jQuery, which allows you to create more of a dynamic interface here where things happen on screen without ever having to refresh the page. So that's what we did there would all be handled by jQuery. And um, what that also does is allow you to do use something called Ajax. And what Ajax does is kind of communicate between the front end and the back end. So what it's doing is from you know, using JavaScript, communicating with PHP, and passing that information back and displaying it on screen without ever having to refresh the page. So if you remember the example previously, it had to refresh every time and didn't have any sense of the history of the chat. Using Ajax and jQuery you can create interfaces like this where everything's happening uh, on one screen and you're never being taken away from it. So what I wanted to do now was share some of the things we learned when we were creating this, because it might help you if you're doing the same. One of the first things we learned was that ChatGPT doesn't really store its own copy of the conversation history you have with it. And what that means is that every time, if unless you pass that information to it, it will respond as if it's a new conversation every single time. So you'll get a lot of repetition. It'll ask you the same questions over and over again. So what you need to do is let it understand what the conversation history you've had is. And the only way to do that is to pass the entire conversation history back with every API request you make. So whenever you add a new item here and speak to Karen here, what you're doing is passing your own response as well as their, what they asked you and any conversation history that happened before that with every request. And, um, you know, so I'm, I'm adding something here that'll go over to there and then, you know, Karen will respond. And if I was to t type something else back to Karen here, um, it will send every piece of information or every piece of conversation that's happened so far here uh, back to uh, ChatGPT. And that's how it understands the conversation. But that's the only way it'll understand what you've asked in the past, uh, what, it's, what, what you've said in the past. So that's just worth knowing. And we were initially concerned with the cost of that because obviously every request you pass to ChatGPT is going to get bigger and bigger because it's you know, passing more and more information as the conversation goes on. But you know, we were worried about cost for that, but when we looked at it, we'd only used six cents of, of token usage after a, a significant amount of development and testing. So unless you're using this on a massive scale, then you don't really need to worry about too much about um, you know escalating costs here. Another thing we encountered um, was issues with ChatGPT's speed. So occasionally, and particularly at certain times of day, what we would find was that it would take quite a long time to respond, you know, perhaps 10, 20 seconds at times. And the issue with that is that, um, you know, it's, it's not a very good user experience if the user types something and then nothing happens for a period of time because they've got no idea if it's broken or if something's going to eventually happen. So what we eventually did um, was, you know, we, we played around with things like response lengths to limit these, um, you know, we, you can limit the amount of tokens it uses so that, we, you know, to say 250 words in the response and that did help. But what we initially, what eventually did was treated it via, you know, fixed it via the interface. So that dot, dot, dot that you saw there is a bit like WhatsApp when someone's typing response. And we used that as a sort of user experience thing to 
you know, make it look like something's happening. So that dot, dot, dot appears when ChatGPT is thinking or writing its own response. But it's almost as if Karen is typing. So it's, it's a kind of a subtle user experience thing just to show the user that something is happening. And it's little things like this that you can use to mitigate any speed issues between uh, you know, you know, ChatGPT generating its response. So the last thing we, you know, kind of key learning we had was around prompts. And prompts are the things that you pass to ChatGPT initially to tell it what to do and uh, how to uh, behave and, and things like that. And it, you have to be very, very careful about how you structure your prompt so there's no ambiguity at all within it. And uh, I'll show an example on screen now of an issue that we had where occasionally Karen would just spit out a, a huge amount of dialogue of her own and she was playing the part of Karen and the learner and uh, the, the dialogue uh, was all being kind of passed back as one response and there was no back and forth between you and Karen. And we played around with this for a long time because, um, you know, it was completely random as to whether Karen would behave as we wanted her to, or occasionally she'll just spit out this this big long block of text, uh, which which wasn't ideal. So we did a few things to try and get around this. Initially, we played around with a, a variable called temperature, uh, which is something you pass with your API request, and this is kind of how I don't know creative you want the response to be. So if you want the response to be fairly standard every time, you can set that temperature to a lower value. And if you're happy for it to be, you have a bit more creative license and be a bit more wacky with its responses, then you can increase that temperature. And we dropped that temperature to a lower value in the hope that it would always respond in the same way, but it didn't. So ultimately we ended up looking at the, the, the prompt itself and we ended up taking out a line which said you should ask approximately 10 questions and then end the conversation by giving some overall feedback on my responses and what we wanted to do there was for Karen to ask 10 questions individually but what she was what chat GPT understood that as was for it to spit out 10 questions as one response and by removing that uh, part from the prompt that was understood more clearly by ChatGPT and it behaved a lot more uh, kind of closely to how we wanted it to. So they were the main learning points that we had and uh, what we then did once we had a sort of completed tool that we wanted to use within uh, Learn Dash was we created it, you know, sort of wrapped it up into a Learn Dash uh, WordPress shortcode that we could paste into the editor. And uh, yeah, I'll just show you here what the uh, editor looks like. So we create this shortcode here, and within this, you can pass in the context for the conversation, which is you know essentially the prompt. So you can see what we've written here as the prompt for Karen. And this just means that it can be slotted into the Learn Dash course content and uh, you know, within a you know, topic or a lesson or you know, any kind of uh, content that you have within, within Learn Dash. So we hope you found that useful and hopefully it helps someone else who's doing a similar thing to understand what is um, you know, possible within this and give you some ideas. Obviously, we appreciate not everyone has the capability to create interfaces like this and interact with you know, via APIs and, and things like that. So what we're going to do in a future video is look at potential plugins that you could use to create a similar experience on your own platform. So uh, yeah, look out for that video when it's um, created. And um, yeah, hopefully, uh, some of you got something out of this and, and some ideas for your own your projects. 
we'd love to hear if you've used ChatGPT yourself, you know, if you can share any ideas or uh, useful resources that you've had uh, potentially in the comments of this video, that'd be really useful for some others. So if you did like this video, if you did, please give it a like. And if you'd like to see more like this, please subscribe to the Train Spark YouTube channel.